Hi everyone, today I'm going to be covering the different funnel tracking methods and which one we suggest most to our clients at CS2. I thought it'd be interesting to dive into the different tracking methods of the funnel because we often get asked when we come into an organization, what is the best way to track the funnel? And we have to educate them also on why maybe their current process for tracking is not the best solution. So I thought the best way to actually show this to everyone would be to look at our template that we use in our audit when we audit the different funnel tracking methods uh, that a client could be using and talk through the different tracking methods so that when you go into your organization, you're able to be well equipped to speak to the pros and cons of each. Okay, so you can see here, this is taken directly from our audit and this is the template for the funnel tracking methods. Now, since we've been working at CS2, we've seen a ton of different tracking methods for the funnel or we've implemented different tracking methods because technology is advanced and what you can do within the CRM or tools for automation has advanced. And so we've now nailed down our preferred method, which I'll chat through, but I want to talk through the different methods first. So the first two are pretty similar. So, and this is probably the most common method that your company has where you track different stage timestamps on the lead and contact. And anytime someone flows through that funnel stage, you just stamp the uh, day or date time to those fields on the lead and contact. And usually those are mapped from the lead to the contact and you'll see it for that first time or the most recent time that person went through the funnel. Now, this is an okay tracking method, especially if you have nothing in place, but there are some reasons why that doesn't work. So we call it the fractured funnel, but when you think about it, there could be leads that are then getting updated with that data, but then what happens when they get recycled and then come back through? So you're going to probably be overriding that historical data because you're stamping it again. Yes, you could have another set of fields, but then it's another set of fields that you have to incorporate into your reporting. The second thing is it's really hard to then tie that record or that lead all the way through to the contact and opportunity and then hopefully close one revenue uh, because of the different objects itself. So it's really tricky to actually tie those together and companies usually struggle with that method. The difference also as well is that you are likely tracking the timestamps on different objects that ha you have to report on separately. So say you have a contact that MQLs, you're going to have another report then that you have to run side by side and people have to like add them together on the dashboard. Kind of a pain in the butt. So another thing that some people will do is you'll still have that same method, but you'll use one object to tie those together, like the campaign member in Salesforce. And then you use formula fields to look at the most recent dates and so forth for that stage. Now, this is okay as well. At least it's better because you're fixing a little bit of that fractured funnel, but you still don't have that repeat journey. Uh, you're overriding the data, and it's usually a bit messy in terms of being able to see repeat journeys. So that is one of the most common ones that we see. We usually suggest that clients, you know, sophisticate past this, especially if they're trying to get better reporting and see the three V's, which is conversion, velocity, and volume. Now, the next tracking method is the BI joined method. And we typically don't really see this or even suggest it. It would be taking the same data that you would have from that siloed method or the CRM joined method and then sending that over to a BI tool. Uh, you don't get the benefit of the repeat journey because you're not updating that data effectively um, or having it in separate object records. And the only benefit uh, really would be maybe you can do different joins and all the sophisticated tracking that you could do within a BI tool, but you're also not sending the right type of data. So definitely don't suggest that one. And then the last tracking method would be a unified method. And this could have different formats that you could have. Our suggested method and what we set up for clients is doing a unified method using a custom object. And we build that within a Salesforce CRM. And so for any time there is a life cycle that gets started right at sales ready, 
will create a custom object record that continues to get updated all the way until they are closed out from that active funnel. The benefit of this is you can have multiple life cycles tied to someone without having to compromise on your history tracking. And you can also do some great things as far as tying it to the different lead and contact and seeing it still in one report being able to tie that to an opportunity or even the campaign object. So you can be really flexible with the type of data that you're putting onto the custom object. Another great thing with the custom object is you can account for stages that get skipped. So if someone enters a pipeline opportunity, you'll be able to backdate all of that data effectively and still account for it. Also, you'll be listening for the different types of sales ready leads or people that can enter your funnel instead of just MQL. So it's surely a unified view at that point. Now, what can you do yourself? So if you are talking to your team internally about what could be a great tracking method for you, which I do suggest as a custom object, there is the option where maybe you do some type of cyclical model on like a campaign member, but we do suggest a custom object. And the different features that matter that you could talk through is uh, on the template itself. So a cyclical buyer journey, which I talked about, a single report, the unified go-to-market tracking, report consistency, which is super important, being able to report on those life cycles the same exact way. And then, like I said, be able to see repeat engagement. So now that you are well informed on the different tracking methods and the differences between all of them, as well as educated on our preferred method and the pros of using the cyclical unified method using a custom object in our case, then you're well equipped to meet with your different stakeholders to talk through the cons of maybe your current method and why you should look to maybe the future to sophisticate toward a method that will actually give you the reporting and consistency that you need. If you want any information about the custom object, feel free to reach out to us at csgmarketing.com and happy to answer any questions in the comments.